we check everybody's government issued photo ID. We use the same technology that's used by banks to check for fraud. We make sure that it matches a live selfie. So your government ID, your driver's license, most likely, it has to actually be you. And then we also make sure that people's profile pictures match their government ID and their selfie. You can't post a picture of somebody else. I tried uploading a photo of George Clooney. I thought there was a strong resemblance. The app said, no, you can't do that. They rejected that photo. This is episode number 580 with Andrew Hendel. What diving platforms are doing to ensure user safety? We are going to be talking about safety online. This is such an important topic and we have talked about it before on the, on the podcast, but Andrew has something special to offer that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Hi, everybody. I am Sandy Weiner. Welcome back to Last First Date Radio, where we believe it is never too late to go on your last first date. And to support you, I've written two books. The first one is Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. And this book is filled with 30 tips on how to basically be a better person, how to, how to really improve all areas of your life. And the second book is called Choice Points in Dating. This book is really a guide to dating, both online and offline. And I go deep into many topics of that I teach in my private coaching. And you can find both of these books on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. Every week I bring you a tip from the Woman of Value book. This week's tip is choose love over fear. And this is true for dating. It's true for anything. If you are really scared to do something, figure out what your why is. Why are you doing this? What's important to you? And if something is really important to you, then it's going to help you really work through your fear. And so choose love over fear. And before I bring Andrew on, I want to invite you to join my Facebook group called Your Last First Date. And we are now about 4,000 women strong. This is for women only, women over 40 who are looking for a positive place of support, which is extremely rare. I belong to a few other groups out there and man, they are just a cesspool for complaints. And uh, it's, it's cancerous, in my opinion. My group is nothing like that. It's a great place for support and it's free. So join us at your last first date. And now for my guest, Andrew Hendel is the CEO and founder of a company called Marshmallow. That's without the W, a company that applies financial technology to enhance safety and security for online daters. As the visionary behind Marshmallow, he is dedicated to revolutionizing the online dating landscape. Welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. There's a company called Garbo that recently ended their partnership with Match.com. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about who Garbo is and how you feel about what happened? Yeah, so Garbo was a service. They Well, they had a service that would enable people to do background checks on somebody that they had met online at a reasonable cost. They had been integrated into uh, some various different dating apps. They had this partnership with Tinder that didn't work out. And Garbo has since discontinued offering these background checks. With most online dating apps, anybody can join the app. They don't check your name, your photo, your age. You can join with a fake name, a fake age. You can post whatever pictures that you want. You can post pictures of a celebrity. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. So even if you were to use a service like Garbo, which they don't offer anymore, it still would be insufficient because you might be entering in the name and date of birth of somebody who doesn't actually exist. So it wouldn't return anything. So you could basically do what a lot of people do, which is post a fake profile and it would come back as real. It would come back as verified. Yeah. It would come back as no no criminal check would be be found. I mean, Garbo doesn't have the service anymore, so you can't use it. And you're kind of on your own to verify somebody's identity. There are various different services that are concerned about people's safety. Some of them, they don't actually recommend even using one of these $20 or $30 a month 
uh, you know, criminal background check kind of services because they view them as unreliable or they may be looking into you in various ways as a uh, user. There's various problems, uh, obviously, as I believe you're well aware when it comes to online dating. And it was really to uh, address those challenges that I created Marshmallow, which is a much uh, safer dating app for you know men and women, all ages. What's different about Marshmallow is we check everybody's government issued photo ID. We use the same technology that's used by banks to check for fraud. We make sure that it matches a live selfie. So your government ID, your driver's license, most likely, it has to actually be you. And then we also make sure that people's profile pictures match their government ID and their selfie. You can't post a picture of somebody else. I tried uploading a photo of George Clooney. I thought there was a strong resemblance. The app said, no, you can't do that. They rejected that photo. We also check over 300 government databases. There's one in all 50 U.S. states, and we exclude almost 800,000 registered sex offenders. According to the FBI, over one in 10 registered sex offenders has an online dating profile. You don't have to worry about those people on Marshmallow. I actually met a sex offender on a meetup hike. Uh, I... I, uh, I I connected with somebody and had a great conversation and we exchanged phone numbers and I had his last name and I don't usually get people's last names, especially if you're doing online dating, but I happened to have his and something told me to just Google him and man, big sex offender. Um, he had told me that his kids weren't talking to him and he was really upset about that. He blamed it on his ex-wife and I don't know the whole story and I actually don't want to know the whole story, but it's uh, it's something that people really worry about. I know my clients get really nervous about who they're dating. And um, so I have, I have mixed feelings about doing background checks and even Googling people because First of all, I think so many of the online connections, we don't really go anywhere anyway. Like you're putting all this effort into checking somebody out and you don't really have a connection. So that's one reason why I wouldn't go right to a, a trying to figure out who this person is. And the other thing is a lot of times the stuff that you do find online in a regular search are actually not reliable because some stuff on Google is not exactly who they are. And so tell us how your services is, is different. I mean, you you go to all these extremes and these people are verified, but is it really that important to do so many checks on people? Well, you know, I think people like you kind of alluded that don't really want to go out with a sex offender. And so if you can exclude somebody like that and know that that person that you're talking to, uh, you don't have to worry about that. That is a relief for a lot of people. There's, you know, other bad experiences that people can have. People can misrepresent their age. Age is self-reported on a lot of dating apps. And so it's possible people might say they're 10 or even 20 years younger than they really are. You go out with somebody, you meet them, they don't look like their photos, they look, you know, they're much older than they represented. It's kind of uh, rude and, and disrespectful and it can be, you know, a bad dating experience. A lot of people online, they experience something like that on Marshmallow because we're checking people's IDs, everybody's IDs, everybody's age is is real. It's not self-reported. People can't can't lie about that. So you, you know that is uh, real and verified and not something that you have to uh, worry about. And then you know online there can be there can be scams, and people can you know ask you for money. They can build a relationship with you emotionally, manipulate you, and with the marshmallow because we're getting people's IDs. That's a very big deterrent to people trying to do any kind of fraud because it can get back to them. If you're doing anything kind of criminal, you're definitely going to want to remain anonymous and are knowing people's names, it not only you know, prevents or, and deters fraud, it also can deter bad behavior in person because people don't have that anonymity that they do with other dating apps. We, we know their names, their, their ages, 
And so if something does go really wrong, it can get back to them. And that's a powerful deterrent and I think an attractive thing for a lot of people. The money thing is, it's fascinating to me how many people fall for those romance scammers. And if you have some basic knowledge about the profile of romance scammers, they all fall into similar categories pretty much, unless they're super, super clever. But to have a site that would prevent that would be really, really helpful. I also think people aren't always sure if somebody's married or not, and they're not always truthful about that. So do you, are you able to check for that? So we're not checking for people's marital status at this time. I'm not sure that we would necessarily in the future either, but people who lie, we, they, you know, there is a report function and it does get back to us. And if somebody is lying about something like that, then we would exclude them from the app. Okay. So any kind of misconduct you can report and you guys take it all into consideration. Because uh, you just, you feel like so many of these dating sites don't have customer support. Uh, they, they're hard to reach. I mean, they do have something, but it's very hard to reach them. And so are you easier to reach and you actually pay attention and all those things that other people complain about? Uh, yeah. You know, we, we have a report and block function inside the app. It's at various different uh, parts of the app. So it's very accessible to people and we review who gets reported. If there's something that happens in person, there's a lot of reports of bad behavior. If somebody says they're not married and they are married, then that would be somebody that we would exclude. Well, that's good to know. So why do you think that dating apps should take responsibility for user safety? Because so many of them don't. And a lot of them say they do, and they don't really. Um, I know Bumble has a verified photo feature that not everybody will verify. You don't have to. It's sort of an extra safety feature. So tell us why you think they should take more responsibility. Well, people now are, are meeting online in much greater numbers than ever before. Online dating has replaced introductions from friends as the most common way for forming a new romantic relationship. So there are millions of people who are meeting in this format. You have dating apps, they're now big businesses, they're worth billions of dollars. They have resources at their disposal to do this kind of thing. I think it's disappointing that they are not. And you mentioned people, they can opt to do the, this photo verification that does nothing to tell you that they're not lying about their name, their age. It just tells you that they may look like their photos. On some of the dating apps even, you can get verified and you can still post pictures of somebody that's not you. You can still post that picture of George Clooney. So what you know, other dating apps they call verified, I, I don't really view as the real meaning of that word. What we're doing on Marshmallow is much more thorough. It's, it's the same process that you would go through, but sometimes even you know, perhaps in, in some ways uh, more thorough than what you would do for a bank. There's, you know, banks you can join online. They don't actually check your ID. We don't, we don't ask for a social security number or anything like that. Like that's, you know, we're not, we're not doing that, but we check your ID. We make sure your picture matches your selfie and it's actually you. So there's a lot of very good things that we're doing to keep people safe. That's great. Do you also have, I know some of the sites like elite singles and places like that will have a blog feature on their website where they actually post safety kind of concerns or how to how to write a profile or things like that. Do you have that yet? We, we do. We have a portion of our site where we list a whole bunch of different safety tips. It's accessible in the footer of our website. And there's a bunch of, of tips we have both for online safety and for in-person safety. Some of the issues that are there maybe more, even more geared for other apps where people can post pictures of somebody that's not themselves on us, on our app, that's not going to be a, an issue that you're going to face. 
Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, I think it's important for people to know. I know when I first got divorced and I started dating online, I was so clueless and made all the mistakes. I, I did fall for a scammer once, but it was clear that his words were not matching up right away. Like things that he was saying were, he wasn't holding his lies were not matching up. And I, then I started doing research and I, I didn't know that you could take an image at that time and search for the image on the web. And <clears throat> it immediately came up with a, a romance scammer site. And all of his messaging was exactly the same as other people who had actually given him money Eventually, I ended it when he called me at like 11 o'clock at night. Um, and I was like, yeah, this there's something off here. Or maybe it was like one o'clock in the morning. I got a missed call and I was like, yeah, this guy is not who he says he is. So it's important to know the safety tips. It's also important to uh, to take precautions. And so what are some of the the key things I know your your site is ensuring safety and it's ensuring that we are who we are. But what are some of the things that you would really want our audience to know to protect their safety? There's a number of tips that you know if you're meeting somebody online. Some people like to use a Google Voice number initially, so that person doesn't actually have your real phone number. If you're meeting somebody in person, it can be a good idea to meet them somewhere there's good visibility, maybe in the day instead of at night, to arrange your own transportation so you're not dependent on a stranger to get to and from where you're going to meet in a public place, to watch your drink, always a, a good idea around that. Sometimes you know, it might be advisable to leave separately or make sure that the other person leaves before you do so they can't necessarily follow you Home, those are all some of the safety tips that you know, we would have listed on our, our website. We've got more that are there. It's a, a fairly long list. Those are really great tips. I Too many people uh, do things that are so unsafe. I mean, I, I had a client once who she was a professional, really smart woman, and she was letting men pick her up at home that she had never met. And I said, don't ever do that. Or going on a hike in a in a secluded place on a first date, you know, like just really use common sense and don't give people the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you don't know these people. Don't, don't feel the connection is so strong that you can trust them. I, I think that that all sounds like very good advice as well. Can have yeah. you add to our, our safety tips. <laughs> I got lots of articles on my website about, about online dating safety. I'd be happy to, to, cross post them onto your website that would be fun <laughs> That'd be great, yeah. let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors this episode is brought to you by amazon music unlimited you can listen to over 70 million songs and thousands of playlists and stations plus you can now stream your favorite podcasts like last first date radio you can listen to any song, anytime, anywhere, on any of your devices. Get Amazon Music Unlimited for free for 30 days. Just head on over to getamazonmusic.com forward slash last first date to learn more and claim this offer. Tell us a little bit about your background. You came from a financial background. Um, what made you decide to found this company? So I, I worked in financial services. I learned about all this new identity verification technology that banks are using, and they're using it to prevent fraud. They want to protect themselves from losing money. And I wanted to use that same technology in a novel way to protect all these different uh, people who are going on online dating apps and protect them from bad experiences. I've got a younger sister. And I see from her experience, all of the precautions that she takes. She will tell people, this is where I'm going. This is when I'm going to be back. So people know to check in on her. They know that she's okay. And she does it with a whole bunch of her, her friends. There's just a lot of things that are involved. And I wanted to do something you know, for, for her and for other young people and, and older people as well that just makes it a safer and more enjoyable experience. I mean, dating, it should be fun. You shouldn't have to worry about 
all of these different issues. Sadly, you do. And by taking off a lot of the risk, we're hoping that people can more comfortably enjoy themselves. That's um, it's a good it's a good goal. I think that people really get so scared that a lot of them don't date online, or they, you know they think that the only thing there is online is scammers and narcissists and liars and cheats and all the stuff. But yes, it is there. But to me, it's a it's it's not a huge percentage. It's a small percentage. You just don't want to get stuck with these people. I would say the the majority of people online are not nefarious. They are just people. Some of them have no idea how to date. They don't know how to have you know how to message, how to do any of the stuff that you're supposed to do online. But they're not bad people. They're just not right for you. But you want to feel like you're doing everything you can to feel safe because it shouldn't be a dangerous thing to do. It's a great resource. Like you said, it's the way most people meet today. And so let's make it a better experience for people. I agree. Yeah, that, that's the intention. And yes, you're, you're absolutely right that there's a low probability of something really bad happening. I mean, most people, it's not going to happen, but and you, and a lot of people think, oh, well, bad things, that happens to somebody else. That doesn't happen to me necessarily. And sadly, you know, some bad things can happen. And and yes, like you said, it's a very low probability, and we want to take that low probability off the table. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask the obvious question, why the name Marshmallow? <laughs> <laughs> marshmallow, no W at the end. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, marshmallow, it's candy, it's confectionery. Dating, it's supposed to be sweet, enjoyable. When I think about marshmallows, I think about happy times by the campfire with friends and family. And you want to you make your marshmallow into a s'more. You want to get your marshmallow warm and toasty, but you don't want it to get burned. And just like that, we want people to have a good, safe, fun experience, but we don't want people to get burned dating them. Nice. So I like the the lightness, the sweetness, the fact that it's can be made into different forms, <laughs> but uh, burnt, not so good, not so tasty. Uh, it's funny that I I did a TED talk many years ago about dating like a Tootsie Pop. And um, I used the candy reference because I used to date like a Tootsie Pop with a hard outside. That was how I had learned all the dating lessons was by getting guarded and harder on the outside, but soft and mushy on the inside. And then as I grew as a person, I became a Heath bar, which is strong on the inside and softer on the outside. So I didn't do marshmallow, but I think candy is a great metaphor for dating. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what? I, I should add that marshmallow has other safety features or just other features in general that I think are appealing to people, men and women. One of the things that we do is when people first message Somebody, you can only send one message. You can't double text until the other person responds. And sometimes when people are matching online, you you know, you match with somebody, maybe you have second thoughts. Maybe you decide that somebody not really interested in on other apps, that person can then message you over and over and over again. They might get more irritable that you're not responding. They might say things that you find offensive or, or don't like in some way. We prevent all of that from happening in the first place. You can message once, you don't get a response, you can't message again. And so we're trying to anticipate and head off some of this unwanted messaging and potential harassment. People do harass and they often will harass when you end something. If you choose not to go out with somebody again and the person gets really angry and mean, is there a way to report something like that as well? Yeah, yeah, we, we have re report function all, all throughout the app. There's, it's very accessible and we give people multiple reasons for why they may want to report somebody. It could be something that they said online in the app. It could be in-person harm that happened. And we, we take, you know, we, we review all those kinds of reports. That's good. I know that Bumble recently had a big thing in the in the news about ghosting and that they want people to report ghosting. And people in my Facebook group are all confused about this because first of all, 
if people ghost you, they often block you and you can't even report their profile because it's missing. And if they just don't show up, like if they start, I mean, it's just, I think it's really hard to track something like that. I'm curious how you feel about this issue. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously if somebody makes plans to see you and you don't go and see them in, in person, that's a negative experience for anybody who's ever had that happen to them. That's not what you want to experience when you go on an online dating app with with Marshmallow again, because we do know people's real names, their their dates of birth, there's a greater degree of honesty that people bring to the platform. You're not totally anonymous. You know, we know who you are. We don't we don't disclose anybody's names on the app. We only disclose your first initial. So if you want to tell somebody your name, that's you know your business. But we know people's names. We know who they are. And because of that, that, that leads to a lot more honest behavior, both online and offline. Yeah, that's interesting. So the first initial is not, they don't know each other's names until you decide that you're going to disclose that. Yes. So my demographic who I work with is over 40. And I'm wondering what is, I know it's a fairly new dating app. What is the, the average age uh, demographic that you're dealing with right now? So we have people of all ages who are joining the app. We're relatively new. We're building our community. We're doing influencer marketing and, you know, getting the word out there. We're doing PR. I've been on uh, TV a couple of times, you know, doing podcasts like this one. So we're, we're building up our community, like any kind of business that's starting out. And the ages, they, they range. We've got younger people that are on there. We've got people who are, you know, older who have been joining. So it's a, really a, a full range of people. I do think that not being catfished, not having you know something go wrong in person, these are universal concerns. They're not really something that somebody who's older or younger only cares about. I think anybody cares about avoiding those kinds of bad experiences. And so we're, you know, appealing to a broad uh, base of users. And all over the United States, or are you in other countries as well? Uh, we're in the United States. We're released in you know, Canada, UK, the English speaking world. Okay. And do you have a travel mode? So if people are traveling, they could, it's based on location, I'm assuming when people are wherever they yeah. are. Yeah. So we, you know, people who join, they're required to uh, give us permission to view their location. We only take your approximate location, not your precise location. And then that way you can tell how far away different profiles are from you. We, we touched on people who are trying to scam you earlier. You know, somebody's really, really far away. That might be an indication that they're not so genuine. So you would, you would have that tell on our app. I believe the feature that you are uh, alluding to is one where you can look as if you're in a different area than where you are mm -hmm. currently. And that is on our roadmap to, to, to build out. And that would in, in all likely be a premium subscription feature. Mm, okay. Um, so what are your final words of advice, Andrew, for anyone who wants to go on their last first date? I, I would I would recommend downloading Marshmallow. <laughs> I think that's a good place to start. You know, online dating is, I, I, as you said, it's a, a good thing. I think there's some low probabilities of bad things. You want to get rid of that risk. And so having a platform that prioritizes your safety is certainly something to consider. And I, I think you're absolutely right that there are a lot of people who are still reluctant to try online dating and I think for for them, Marshmallow is a very very appealing app because it addresses those very things that are holding them back. Great, I love that. So, give us your website before we go. So, our, our website is marshmallow no w at the end dot com. Marshmallow dot com, and, and we'll have we're, links to your social media and everything on the show notes as well. We're available on on Apple and Android, Marshmallow, no W. 
Okay. Marshmallow app. No W. Thank you so much, Andrew, for coming on the show and sharing great advice on how to stay safe online because it is a great way to meet people. And I'm actually, I've taught a course on online dating. This is my ninth time teaching the same course that I started during the pandemic because people were completely confused about how to date during the pandemic. And I thought this is a great opportunity for people to learn how to connect better, have better conversations, more meaningful connections, because we took sex off the table. We took who pays for the first date off the table. Nobody was leaving their house. Great time to learn more about yourself and make a great profile for yourself. So it's evolved over time now that the pandemic is kind of behind us. And uh, I think it's great to have a, an app that keeps people safe. So good luck with, with this new app. Thank you. And it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. And thanks everybody for listening. If you love our show, please give us a high rating on Apple podcasts. And as always, here's to your last first date. If you are ready to get unstuck, gain new tools, become more empowered and finally find your last first date, I'd love to talk to you. Fill out an application to be considered for a complimentary half hour love breakthrough session at lastfirstdate.com forward slash application. 